Okay, guys, how's it going? Let me know if you can see me. I'm not able to see me on the screen, so I'm not sure if it's working. But bottom line is this. We're going to be talking about a huge, very important topic that has to do with the future of Social Security benefits going forward. And just so you guys understand the full complexity of this situation, it is basically a massive design or massive factor that will define whether or not Biden gets support from SSI people going forward. Now, as you know, Joseph Biden has made a lot of huge promises when it comes to supplemental security income and the future of Social Security benefits in general. Now, he's looking pretty. He's looking very very, very good right now as a result of essentially, you know, President uh, Trump's party, the Republican Party, coming out with all these budget measures to cut social, you know, social security benefits, increase the age requirements, all that stuff. So President Biden is looking pretty right now. Now, that's not a good thing when it comes to future increases in benefits or future things that essentially allow you know, basically those social security recipients to get an increase because if President Biden feels relaxed, if President Biden feels calm about his stance on social security benefits going forward, that's a bad thing for social security recipients because then he doesn't have to give anything to get them to join up with him. So the bottom line is, is very simply put this. You want President Biden to be in a situation where he feels like he has to give something to those who have social security benefits and might withhold their vote in this upcoming presidential election. But he's not there. He's not there because the Republicans just came out with a massive budget that is not pro-SSA when it comes to Social Security benefits being what they normally are and repeating over and over and over again. Let's get into it. This is uh, basically an article. Uh, it is the case for updating the SSI asset limit. Uh, and this is one of the things that's going to become the major major playground for politicians fighting with each other for SSI benefits. And it's about the $10,000 increase in the resource limit. Now, this $10,000 boost takes it from $2,000 for the individual that's on SSI benefits up to essentially uh, $10,000. Now, as you know, that's not an automatic stimulus-like payment, but it's damn near as good as, as a stimulus payment because it allows SSI people to start to accrue some sort of resources. So what a lot of SSI people are running into is the issue of they try to have stuff and there are certain things that are allowable, right? One house, one car, they don't count. You know, $1,500 life insurance policy, whatever. Doesn't count, doesn't matter. But the bottom line is this, I think it's incredibly important, that they're not able to really have resources and assets as to what they normally cost now. And the problem is $2,000 is hardly anything. I mean, in $2,000, you go through essentially a couple of months, uh, you know, three, four, maybe months total, and you're at what your food cost was for the entire resource limit on SSI benefits for that particular year. So the bottom line is raising up to $10,000 makes a lot more sense. And $2,000 back in the day made sense because as a financial number, as a, you know, $2,000 number, you know, cars were much cheaper back then. But due to the massive inflation uh, during the past three years, right, that we've experienced, uh, there's no way that $2,000 works anymore. So I've got this article here. It was done by Kathleen uh, Ramig and Luez Nunez and Arlock Sherman. Uh, it, it's from a group that I really like uh, when they write about things. Let's go into it real quick. The Supplemental Security Income SSI program for low-income elderly and disabled people has the strictest savings limits of any federal program, right? Because it's the program of last resorts, okay? Eligibility is limited to people who have only $2,000 as a single person or $3,000 as a uh, couple. Also, super thank you to Avalon Watson for becoming an appreciation member. That's absolutely awesome. Now, uh, from the article, this is not enough for beneficiaries to weather an emergency, okay? Let alone provide stability or save for the future. Administering the resource limit, often referred to as an asset test, is burdensome for both Social Security Administration staff and for claimants. Policymakers should increase or even eliminate SSI's resource limit and make growing bipartisan support to do so. Now, they're never going to get rid of, they're never going to get rid of this, you know, $2,000 resource limit. But if they were to get this $10,000 boost in that, you know, in that background, in that end, that would be a massive, massive increase in the future for SSI, supplemental security income beneficiaries, being able to have a regular traditional life. Now, some of you guys don't realize that SSI benefits are a lot of things, right? It's for people who are old, over 65, who can't get regular retirement. It's for people who are disabled at literally one day old to the moment before their death. It is for people who are refugees, immigrants, et cetera, with the seven year plus two year up program. So it's a lot of things to a lot of people. It's like the overall just, it'll catch you when you're going to fall. You didn't pay enough to the regular systems, it'll catch you kind of gig. All right. The resource limit 
is the leading cause of erroneous payments in the SSI program and leads to churn uh, because beneficiaries who go even slightly over the outdated limit are suspended and then terminated. I mean, they're not always suspended and then terminated. There's like a process. It creates an overpayment. It goes through this whole thing. They're trying to fix that right now. But the bottom line is that the $2,000 resource limit, SSI people left and right violate this thing all the time. You bump it up to a $10,000 boost, Everybody, you're going to have way less overpayments. It's like the fastest, easiest fix you could have to this massive overpayment problem that's actually occurring. Now, to be fair, we are expecting the Social Security Administration to lean on Congress. But they don't have much strength, but to lean on Congress to get them to pass something like this. And the reason why, okay, just to make this really simple and really clear, the reason why at the end of the day they have to go through this option is basically to promote the idea of pushing forward you know, a group of SSI applicants who are able to consistently uh, go ahead and survive in America. Now, America is not, to be fair, doing so well right now, okay? Uh, the Social Security Administration is down to around 55,000 employees, which is like super bad. It's super bad. They've frozen all hiring across the board because the inflation was so massive that they just couldn't hire more employees as a result of it. So when I was saying back in the day, it's so bad, it's at 6,000 employees, it was actually based on the new report that I went over, like I think two days ago, even worse at 55,000 employees. And it is expecting to continue to drop. So, what we're experiencing with like disability applications, instead of being for like an average applicant, you know, like, you know, let's say three to six months, now it's up to around 17, potentially even 18 months for those who don't have expedited status or quick, you know, basically technical denial or approval situations. All right. Now, here's the deal. Additionally, the SSA employees must administer these complex and inefficient rules amid a customer service crisis. They're in due uh, to underfunding, right? Because the government isn't giving them enough money at the SSA to actually hire enough people. Because the value of the limit is not indexed to inflation, meaning like we don't raise that $2,000 every single year, and it hasn't been updated in decades. Its value erodes each year due to inflation. It is now only one-fifth of its 1972 value. So, so the problem is there should be no rule or regulation. I mean, if you wanted Biden to like pass one thing like that represented his four years of helping social security benefits, if he were to pass one thing that actually did something very positive for social security recipients across the board is that every single thing in the SSA must be increased and then put on an index so that it increases every single year. So big increase and then every year it gets its little, you know, slight increase based off of whatever the cost of living adjustment actually ends up being. That would be Biden's smartest long-term actual you know, beneficial promise to the American people. Now, with that said, I don't know if I'm going to actually see that from him because right now he's comfortable because like we said before... He has no reason to give the SSA people anything at all. Not the supplemental security income people, not the social security disability insurance people, not the retired, not the DACs, none of that stuff. So as a result of that, I, I think it's pretty darn important. Again, Batty Beth, thank you for the two dollar nation. I've got Shadow and Sweetie right next to me over here. So um, with that said, uh, just another little thing to kind of keep in mind with this whole situation. The main thing here is that President Biden feels super duper relaxed because the you know Republicans just came out with this budget saying, ah, we're going to cut this. We're going to make you wait until you're, you know, 69 to go ahead and collect your, you know, social security benefits and your retirement. Oh, you know, all this and that. It's just not a positive thing for the Republicans. And like I said in that video, all the Republicans had to do when it comes to social security benefits was shut the bleep up. And the reason why is they could have just waited until January, February, March to release this budget as like something that potentially they could pass. But they didn't. They came out in the absolute worst time with this, which makes me think they might actually be trying to sabotage uh, Donald Trump. It really did make me feel that way. So old school truck driver. Thank you. Thank you for the five dollar nation. I absolutely appreciate it. Love the little hippo with the hype. That's very cool. Now, let's go through some of the basics here. Um, a higher limit would encourage rather than penalize saving and allow people to retain savings to use when they really need those resources. So there is not just to be fair. Any SSI recipients who basically have a plan if they are in an emergency, right? So if America has an emergency, they're going to be the first ones to be in a very bad situation. I mean, sure, you might say like people living in the woods or people waiting to be able to get their SSI benefits certainly wouldn't be the new immigrants we're getting, right? But the bottom line is, yes, the this group of people has no way 
of actually having something to spend in case there was an emergency. It is purely hand to mouth. They get their money, they buy you know groceries, and they eat the money. That's basically what it is. The money is converted directly into food and they eat it. That's that's the bottom line. So what they're saying is that should SSI be allowed to live without anxiety of constantly in fear of some problem occurring? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think that's fair. Remember back in the election of, of uh, you know, 2020, where everybody was like, you know, it'd be amazing if all Americans got $1,000. Well, SSI people get just under that, you know, 900 and change. And as a result of that, now we know with this massive inflation, 900 bucks or 1,000 bucks ain't going to cut it anymore. Now it's more like 1500 to $2,000. Now, with that said, a higher limit would encourage rather than penalize saving and allow people to retain savings to use when they really need those resources. Now, one of the things I think is kind of, mm, I don't know, is that SSI people don't have mm, technical knowledge and training when it comes to spending, usually. Some of them have amazing knowledge because, you know, they work companies under the table, blah, blah, blah. And so they have like amazing, like, you know, financial assistance knowledge of what to do with the money as they receive it. Sure. But the grand majority of them don't know what to do with money. And that's why, and it's very, very simple and straightforward to see why, SSI benefits do not directly pay out essentially all the back pay all at once. You know, the back pay, they'll go ahead and basically give you one check, make you wait a period, you know, give you another three checks worth, wait a period, and then you get the rest of it as the third release of funds. That's because they know SSI applicants and SSI beneficiaries that receive the benefits, they are just not, okay? They are just not educated in how to go ahead and reserve funds. So allowing this to go to $10,000 and then index it and allow it to keep going up as a resource limit, that would be the first good step in that direction, okay? Research shows that having a financial cushion leads to greater economic security. A higher limit would also reduce administrative burdens, payment errors, and churn. And easing or eliminating the asset test would mean that more very low seniors and people with disabilities could get the income support they need to afford the basics and not be forced to first deplete modest savings. Policymakers have recognized the case for allowing greater. Okay, so I just want to bring up a point there. So what they're saying is that people, when they're trying to get onto disability benefits and they can't get onto SSDI benefits because of their date last insured has run, they have to basically spend whatever they have, right, in reserve, in their resources to get poor enough to then go on to SSI benefits. And the problem with that is that we don't want poor SSI people that have like basically less than 10K worth of assets, resources, whatever. We don't want that. We want them having something. And, and here's, here's just a, a bottom line of why it's important for supplemental security income people to have stuff. During the Nixon era, which I can't believe he actually passed this, this is the most liberal, like if you want to, if you want to think like extreme, extreme liberal, extreme woke, the most wokest thing somebody could ever do in America, like there's nobody else that did a woker thing than this as a president that affected a massive, massive percentage of individuals. The most woke thing ever done was passed by Richard Nixon. I know it does not make sense at all. He passed up on security income. Now, he also fired one of the greatest uh, uh, commissioners of the SSA, which is actually the first commissioner of the SSA. But that's another thing. But the bottom line is this. Um, he created, with the help of everybody else, supplemental security income as a net to catch people that basically were potentially rioting for resources. You know, they were they were homeless. They had no they had no food. They had no shelter. They had none of this stuff. Not that America has gotten better, because obviously, you know, I work with the homeless every single day. There's still a lot of homeless. You know, some of them have one wall. Some of them have four walls. Some of them have a roof. Some of them have nothing. They have a sleeping bag, right? You know, some of them have a tarp. That's the base. You know, when you got a tarp, you put it on the ground. Or you sling it between trees or you put it above your head and then you put a cot down. But the bottom line is, it's tough. It's a tough situation. And they pass this program. And so what does SSI benefits actually do? Supplemental security income, its main focus, just, just to be clear with this thing, is to catch people. But the side focus, the side hustle that the government was trying to do was to reduce the amount of crime in America. Because let's just be straight and very fair with this, okay? If you have a bunch of people who can't afford anything, what are they going to do? They're going to steal. They're going to commit crimes. They're going to commit, you know, torts. They're going to commit all these things, you know, misdemeanor, felonies, whatever. And as a result of them having financial insecurity, they're going to go into like live or die mode. And that live or die mode where they're trying to find a way to do a better way of living, where they're trying to get somewhere down the line, where they're trying to be, you know, essentially in a better place. That is what we, I think, I think what the Democrats want to do here. Now, with that said, they have been talking about passing this for a long time. Decades. Decades. It wasn't always 10 grand, right? It grew to 10 grand, but they've been talking about passing this for a very long time. It's been 10 grand for the past, I don't know, four or five years. But the point is, 
this is something that the, the Democrats, you would really expect them as individuals to go ahead and give that $10,000 boost because when you increase that resource limit, it fixes so many things. Gets rid of the overpayment problem at the SSA when it comes to SSI people going over the resource limit. And there's a ton of those people because they're constantly looking into the bank accounts of those people on SSI. They're constantly looking at the income of those people on SSI. So it gets rid of that situation, right? It gets rid of the financial insecurity, anxiety, and depression problem that a lot of these SSI people feel. It gets rid of the uh, you know immediacy of SSI people always needing something in case something slight happens. You know, and a lot of SSI people they're stuck and forced to basically reach out to county resources, state resources, you know, local church resources, religious institution resources, etc. So the problem I see is that they've literally choked out these SSI people to the point where they just can't actually bloom a little bit in the spot where they're going to be. And as a result of that, they just always live in this hyper fear of not having enough. And to be fair, a lot of SSI people, they'll huddle stuff under the table. They'll keep it. They won't report it because, I mean, they report it, they lose their benefits. It's not a good system. It's just, it needs work. All right. So policymakers have recognized the case for allowing greater savings and have increased or eliminated resource limits in other economic security programs, including the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, SNAP, and Medicaid. And that's true. A lot of the resource uh, requirements that were Medicaid, SNAP, stuff like that, they've gotten rid of that because it just didn't make sense. You know. Now, keep in mind, I think this is really important too. When it comes to SSI, SSI has a lot of problems, right? Marriage penalty rule, that sucks. Uh, you, you know, you, a marriage penalty rule is actually a lot of penalties, right? So if you go to marry somebody and you're both on SSI, they reduce both of your benefits. If you go to marry somebody and that person has, you know, a good paying job over like 35 K and I mean, it depends on how many kids and blah, blah, blah. But the point is if you go to marry somebody, you know, over that amount, boop, you're going to lose your benefits because you're no longer considered a poverty based situation. So like, just, just to give you an understanding, like most of the people working nowadays that have an amount over that 35 K, like I would be you know, way over that amount, but you know, a lot of people are, you know, a lot of people are, you know, getting jobs that are 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 120, 30, 40, 50, whatever thousand dollars, you know, $150,000 a year isn't even that odd for a job anymore. Like that's the thing. Like the inflation is so bad. The companies were like, well, got to pay people more, got to pay them more. You know, there's a big increase. We've got to pay them a lot more. So the point is, you know, all these SSI people, they can't basically marry anybody. So they're stuck in this have kids, but have no actual other person other than like they're there, but they're not there. And then the SSA finds out about it and then they reduce their benefits as a result of it. And, you know, you're getting OIGs involved. You're getting the CDI units investigating people. Are they married? Do they hold themselves out as being married and all this stuff? And then they lose the benefits. And that's not just for the spouse, right? Where the, the wife has the kids and yada, yada, yada. That's also for the kids that come out and also get an SSI benefit. They lose their benefits as well if the parent is earning over a certain amount because then all of a sudden they're not in a poverty situation. Okay, in this brief, right, from this document, we analyze several ways to increase SSI's resource limit, including raising them to $10,000 per beneficiary as proposed in S2767 by Senator Sherrod Brown and Bill Cassidy in HR 508. 08 by reps Brian Higgins and Brian Fitzpatrick, okay, raising them to $100,000 per beneficiary consistent with the limits of the ABLE accounts, which don't count against SSI resource limits. I'll do another video on ABLE accounts. <clears throat> I know some people have them. They have a lot of questions. I'll do another video on them. And eliminating resource limits, we also examine excluding retirement savings from SSI resource limits as proposed in the SSI Restoration Act in combination with each of these options. So what they're trying to say here is if they can't give them the $10,000 boost, what can they allow on top of those things that weren't traditionally allowed to be exempt from that resource limit? So normally you'd be like, okay, I'm on SSI, you know, I'm allowed one car, I'm on SSI, I'm allowed to have, you know, for example, let's say, you know, one house or one, you know, apartment or whatever, whatever, you know, you own that and you own that car and things like that. And you're allowed to have those. So they're saying, okay, look, well, if we can't have our $10,000 resource limit, at least President Biden give us other things that they can have that they can put money into, you know, th you know, beyond just the ABLE account, beyond a retirement account, beyond uh, uh, this or that or a pension or 401k, whatever. And that's where they're coming from at this point. Now, a lot of these Democrats and the Republican, too, in the House, they are getting very frustrated because they're watching these programs dwindle and basically fade away in their purpose. And the funny thing is that when SSI benefits were originally passed, the purpose was to take the very bottom and raise them up. And the reason why, as I stated before, was to make sure that the violence would go down. Because we have a lot of people that are mentally unstable or physically unstable. They have severe impairments. If they don't have that money, 
Very, very simple, very straightforward. They're going to commit crimes to be able to survive. Okay. All right, next thing. We find that increasing SSI's resource limit to $10,000 per beneficiary would increase SSI participation by up to 3%, increasing limits to $100,000 per beneficiary. A 50-fold increase would increase participation by about 5%, while eliminating limits would increase participation by about 6%. Excluding retirement accounts would only slightly increase participation. Even radical changes in the SSI's resource rules would not dramatically increase program participation because few people who meet SSI's other criteria have substantial savings. SSI beneficiaries must have very low incomes to qualify, and that means they have little margin for savings. In addition, they either have a disability that substantially limits their earnings, or they are over age 65, or they're an immigrant or, you know, basically a refugee or a uh, individual that's seeking asylum. So the bottom line with this situation is that they are looking at very heavily as politicians, whether or not they can snooker this into one of the bills. Do I think that this is going to slip in with essentially like one of those? like mega bills, maybe, but you have to remember again, President Biden does not have any umph, any push, any real reason to give the Social Security people anything right now because the you know Republicans just delivered to him this whole budget document, which is absolutely horrible for Social Security benefits. Now, here's the next part of this. SSI provides subsistence benefits to elderly and disabled people most in need. It was created in 1972. SSI provides monthly cash assistance to people who are disabled or elderly and have little income and few assets. Similar to the old age survivors and disability insurance program, commonly known as social security, the ones you pay for, those are the ones you pay in with your, your FICA taxes. SSI is administered by the SSA. So even though SSI comes from general taxes, even though it is a poverty disability program, a program, old age program, or a refugee asylum seeker program, it doesn't come from money that's paid in essentially from people from their FICA taxes. It comes from the general taxes. Now in May of 2023, 7.5 million people collected SSI benefits. Now that number is going to go statistically way the hell up because there's all these new refugees and asylum seekers. Most SSI beneficiaries, 85%, are eligible due to a severe disability, including blindness. And remember, when they always look at disabilities, they look at mental impairments, physical impairments, and blindness. I don't know why blindness is in its own category, but I've been thinking about asking somebody about that to see what the deal is, because you'd have to go back to the people that were alive much, much, much farther back than I was, because it's just not clear as to why they chose that. Eligibility criteria for SSI are strict. All applicants must meet SSI's stringent financial criteria and, application, and applicants for disability benefits must also meet some, the same rigorous medical criteria used for Social Security disability insurance benefits. So one of the things that most people don't realize between SSI and SSDI is that they have different financial requirements, but they have the same medical requirements for the most part. For the most, like the stuff you're going to be dealing with, it's always pretty much for the same. So when you're sitting there and you're like, oh, the SSI is just for this, or the SSI is just for that, or it's only for a crazy check, or this check, or that check, or whatever. No, it's the exact same medical standard of severity used throughout the five-step sequential process for SSDI and SSI. Exact same medical standard. So a lot of people get that wrong. Just understand, when you're applying for SSDI benefits, when you're applying for SSI benefits, the exact same medical standard. Cool. Okay, about 60% of applications for SSI benefits were denied in 2018 to 2020. After all levels of appeal, um, now what you need to know about that is that basically 60% of the applicants, right? You had 30, per, sorry, 40% that were ultimately approved. And those are the people who went all the way through their appeals. And that doesn't just include like ALJ hearings. That's initial filing, reconsideration, ALJ hearing, appeals council, AAJs, the appellate administrative judges. Then you go to federal district, federal circuit, and federal, federal Supreme Court of the United States, like the big court, the court where the fancy people sit with the fancy, you know, well, they're not really fancy, but you know, the important ones, the super justices, the ultimate power rangers of justices, the Supreme Court justices, right? The, the biggie fries, all right? Now, with that said, <laughs> the big bads, <laughs> those who qualify are subject to regular financial redeterminations to ensure continued compliance with SSI's strict income and asset rules and regular continuing disability reviews to ensure continued medical eligibility. So another way to put that is that a lot of SSI people have a lot of CDI units chasing them around. CDI units are basically the SSA's secret police force that goes around and searches to see who is actually disabled, who's actually severe, who's got assets and resources that they really shouldn't have. So SSI people are a heavy target of the Social Security Administration because there's all these extra rules that limit them. And those limits are exactly what these OIG people with the CDI units are setting these secret police out to go ahead and search. The basic federal SSI benefit is about three, four month, uh, three fourths of the poverty line for a single person. Thus, while SSI alone is not enough to lift someone living independently above the poverty line, it reduces hardships and lessens the need for support from family members. So just to be clear, 
when people say the poverty line, SSI benefits, 100% of the poverty line, only give you about three-fourths of what you would need to be shitty poor. That's that's basically it. It only gives you three fourths of what you would need to actually be shitty poor. So you're worse than that. You're just you're just extra astronomically poor, as opposed to just you're you're the next notch down. And so the problem with that is that we're not even giving people 100 percent of the poverty level. So one of the things I thought President Biden was going to actually push and pass during his first three years, or you know, honestly, in the first six months of his presidency, was raising SSI benefits to a higher level. Now, did I expect him to have massive immigration that you know was not always on the line on the level? No, I didn't expect that. But now I understand it. If you're going to let that many millions of people into this country, you know, without really following the proper system, even though they changed the system to be quasi proper then you don't want to actually pay that much more on SSI benefits because if you're putting a bunch of them onto asylum and refugee SSI, that's going to add up. It's going to add fast. So I get why now he didn't want to actually raise that, but I thought that's what he was going to be doing. Now, uh, Batty Betsy, thank you. Thank you for the $5 donation. I super appreciate it. That's awesome. Very cool. Love the little ha-ha pair. That's awesome. So now let's keep rolling through this uh, real quick. Um, roughly half of all beneficiaries in uh, <clears throat> had incomes below the federal poverty line, even with their SSI benefits in 2016. In addition to providing modest cash benefits, SSI is an important pathway to health coverage because they get their Medicaid. As beneficiaries in most states are automatically eligible for Medicaid, in addition to medical care, Medicaid provides essential long-term services and support, allowing more elderly and disabled people to live in their homes and communities instead of in institutions. Now, the reason this occurs is that if you take somebody and put them in an institution, they become very, very expensive to upkeep. A lot of people don't realize that. Putting somebody in their own place, uh, you know, and basically have them just, you know, go th to the doctor's, you know, appointments, get their medication, stuff, and that's way cheaper than having that person go ahead and live in an institution because then you have to pay for a lot more staff for all these individuals. Now, imagine, imagine in your brain taking all these SSI people, these 7.5 million people, and putting them all in into institutions. There would be an institution on every main block with every main street. There was just, you know, every city would have many, many, many institutions. It would be the mass of the largest housing crisis ever seen in America. SSI's resource limits have stagnated at low levels for decades. SSI has extraordinary low resource limits. Applicants who exceed the limits are ineligible for any benefits from the program. Current beneficiaries who exceed the limits are suspended and then terminated from program participation if their savings remain above the limits. Usually they're not terminated. They're just going to slap on the wrist from the SSA. They'll get an overpayment and then they'll have to pay back, you know, 50 bucks, 100 bucks a month, which of 900 and something bucks, if you're getting the full amount, that's you know, you're getting screwed. And if you're not getting the full amount, if you're getting the one third reduction rule, right? The in-kind support maintenance rule where they take away a third of your benefits and you're only getting 600 and something. I mean, you're really in bad shape then. You know, if they're taking away 50 bucks from 600 bucks, you're, you, there's nothing. There's nothing. You you just, you can't make it. So that's kind of the bottom line there. With that said, SSI beneficiaries are limited to only $2,000 in assets of any kind for married couples, two parent uh, families with SSI beneficiary children. The limit is 3,000, which creates a marriage penalty because the couple limit is 25% less than the limit for two individuals. Countable resources include cash, bank accounts, retirement savings, stocks, mutual funds, saving bonds, life insurance, household goods, burial, which is always so weird. Like, how the hell are they going to know what your household goods are? And if you hold on to something of value and you claim that it's for sentimental purposes, they're not allowed to traditionally count it. But otherwise, most people get on the phone like, oh, yeah, I was holding that for, you know, if I ever have to sell it one day, at least I've got something. And then, boom, they lose their SSI benefits. Literally. Literally. You ever get it? Go watch that video I did where I talk about essentially like, you know, household goods and SSI benefits held for value versus held for sentimental purposes. Yeah. Yeah. Not good. Not good. The rule needs to be changed. Burial funds and more, as well as the resources of parents, spouses, and immigration sponsors. In many cases, primary residences and vehicles do not count against the resource limit. So this article goes on to talk about a lot more details. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make specific videos about them, but I did want to cover it, what this $10,000 boost is and why it's going to be such a hot, hot button and hot, hot topic going into essentially October slash November of 2024. Now, uh, with that said, Trump is going to have to earn some brownie points. And to be very, very clear with this whole situation, Trump uh, went from being like an okay position of I'm not going to change Social Security benefits to a really shitty position of all my friends that are Republicans just threw me under the bus. And what they did was they threw him under the bus and created a situation where, to be fair, unfortunately now he has to try and backtrap and figure out how to get out of the situation where the Republicans said, hey, we want people to have to live longer, work longer, and then receive less retirement and receive less money. So it's one of those situations where I don't know what his plan is, but he's got to have some sort of plan going forward to be 
batting Biden because Biden is in the winning seat right now. He's in like the best race car when it comes to social security benefits. But if Trump comes out with something that says, okay, we're going to give each group something, the $10,000 resource limit, that's not going to cost the SSA. It's actually going to be cheaper in many regards for the SSA to go ahead and do that. Like when it comes to administrative overpayments, they're going to have way less overpayments. So it's going to actually be cheaper for essentially SSI to be, you know, from that functional, you know, actually administering it, doing the housekeeping of taking care of and watching over these SSI applicants. It's going to be cheaper. So he'll probably do, he'll probably promise that to the SSI people. For the SSDI people, uh, they'll probably they'll probably look to some sort of like you know raising everybody to at least this line sort of gig, like people that are underneath. They'll raise them to this line so that they don't have to take from SSI. Uh, and then probably for the retirement people, they'll they'll probably get rid of any and all taxation against their benefits going forward. Like that would be the main things that he would probably do. I don't know if he'll do that, but those are if I were to boop 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 for those three particular programs, which are the main main ones of Social Security benefits. That's I'm thinking what they will what he will offer. Now if he does offer that. President Biden has to respond. And then you will get into a basically divorced children's parents battle. They're going to have a social security, essentially a dance off as to promising this president for Christmas, promising this president for Easter, promising this president for Hanukkah, promising this president for whatever. So you're going to see them have to bump it up as to what they're going to give each particular group. And I think for supplemental security income, the best thing they can do is give that $10,000 boost for increasing social security uh, resource limits so that they can go ahead and have more money saved and put more stuff aside and receive more stuff from other people. Because remember, a lot of SSI people, they know people. And when people pass away, if they get an inheritance, they got to get rid of that money fast because there's not a lot of programs that they can put it into and actually keep it. So that's one of the worst things about being on supplemental security income is that you're just constantly stuck under the giant rubber tire of the federal government. Now, with that said, I do, I do have another video coming up. I hope you guys stick around for it. We will be starting it in about 10 minutes. I just have to drink a little bit of tea to keep my excitement up. Uh, with that said, we're going to be talking about the new SSA rule for poor applicants. And that's for, you know, basically SSDI people. That's for SSI people all the way across the spectrum. Uh, we're going to be talking about the new rule uh, when it comes to dire need and what they just recently put through. And then the next video after that, we're going to be talking about uh, basically a rule that the SSA and its constitutional rule, it's a constitutional rule, it's big rule, that the SSA violated, they got caught by a watchdog, and we're going to go through what happened as a result of that. So I will catch you guys in about 10 to 15 minutes at the next video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to like, please remember to subscribe, click the all button, and then of course, uh, right here, Disability Resolution PA, that's the law firm I've owned for almost uh, 11 years now, and bottom line is, if you need representation, you can always catch up with me. Now, remember, Tuesdays and Thursdays, I go live. And if you have a question, you get five to seven minutes, you call in to the 407-279-1754 with a fake number, or sorry, with a fake name. And then at that point, I go ahead and pick up. I answer your question in five to seven minutes. Remember to answer or ask your legal question right up front. Ask your legal question right up front. No story mode, okay? If you need more than five to seven minutes for me to figure something out, like run hearing questions with you, help you with the CDR form, you know, basically figure out what your plan is going to be when you're leaving this, you know, company and going into disability land, then, you know, buy the hour. There's a, a very simple thing where you can buy a single hour and uh, it's $250. It's in the bio. It's a little mini contract. You fill it out. You send it in. You send the PayPal or you send the check. And then we put you on the hearing docket counter so you get your hour. All right. We'll catch you guys at the next video. Please, please, please stay safe. It is an interesting year coming up. And uh, I will catch you in about five to 15 minutes. And thank you so much. All right. Have fun, everybody. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.